Welcome to Answers Unleash, a talk show to help you reshape your brain with science and faith to find the answers in front of you. Now, I know a lot of you want to start your own businesses and you have great dreams. Are you tired of working for someone else? Are you at a job with limited career growth? Do you need investors to build new business ideas to help you do that? Well, you're not alone. Millions of people desire to be business owners and employ others. However, there's always a caveat. Most people do not know where to begin, and they do not know how to use their resources for success. Now, some existing business owners also require answers in solving all types of dilemmas that they're seeing. One successful entrepreneur has the answer. So today, we have Chad Zdenek. He has leveraged his own talents to pursue a path in entertainment and in business that has proved wildly successful. As the CEO of Mobile Illumination, Chad Zdenek helps oversee the largest holiday lighting decor company in Los Angeles with his partner and brother, Jason Zdenek. So the, the Grove, the city of Beverly Hills, the Playboy Mansion, and even Santa Monica Promenade illuminates with his company's signature of excellence. So he just calls himself just getting started. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to find out what it takes to reshape your brain with science and faith to start your own business. And here today, we're going to talk with Chad Zdenek. Thank you for being here today. Thanks, Olympia. <laughs> Excited to be here. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm just so happy. I am so happy you are here. Now, many people have recognized you. Uh, you have been on several different uh, TV shows. Let's just talk about that. You're a TV uh, you've been a science TV host. Uh, you have been seen on Amazon.com. Uh, you are also for you were with the A and E, a division of the A and E uh, network, and you had a reoccurring role in the G four TV series Human Wrecking Balls, and I remember that. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about your your background with science and what you've been doing on TV for the last couple of years. Sure, yeah, my pleasure. It's uh, it's been a wild ride to say the least, and I, I never expected to get into TV. I've always been a, a builder, contractor, engineer guy. And uh, one of my professors, actually, from my undergraduate at Loyola Marymount University, uh, had gotten a call from a production company. They were looking for an engineering consultant expert to be on uh, one of the episodes. And so he called me up. He said, hey, Chad, I think you'd be good for this. I said, all right, I'll give it a try and, and auditioned. And uh, what, what started with uh, one episode led to several episodes, which led to the whole series and then led to another season. And it kind of grew from there. Um, and then I did another uh, show called It's F and Science and uh, was uh, one of the science hosts on that show. And it's been a really, really fun uh, experience because what I used to do in the garage with my dad and, and tinkering and building things and experimenting, now I've got like a production size budget. I could do a lot of really cool things with science and uh, it was, it's been great. It's been great. So I, I love that. You have the background of science. People see you and you, if, if for those of you that will go to his website, you will see he's a very attractive man. So all the girls are always <laughs> like, oh my Oh my gosh, Chad Zdenek, the science TV host. And and you have you're not just a face, and you're not just a person on TV that does science, but you know the real deal with science. You have such a, an extensive background. You worked on the space shuttle main engine program for years. You did structural dynamics, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, if I remember right, I think that's where we first met. Yes! <laughs> See, I've, I've known Chad for uh, for almost 20 years now. It's so yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's been a while. So t tell us what you did when you worked on the most amazing, I call it the most amazing manned uh, space shuttle that existed. Tell us what you were doing. Yeah, it was, it was great. That was my first uh, job out of undergraduate um, uh college and uh, working for Boeing is you know big name is Rocketdyne it's here in the valley and actually my grandfather also worked at Rocketdyne oh, I had no um, idea about yeah that. so I actually grew up going to the rec center as a little kid I was probably maybe seven or eight years old and uh, they'd have the family picnics and he worked at Rocketdyne he you know he was one of the guys on the floor uh, he was a mechanic and um, they had the giant, like, like 30-foot rocket ship that you could play in, right? A play gym thing. It was always my favorite thing to go to. And, uh, and then so it was just very surreal to find myself interviewing with what used to be North American at the time. Um, they owned Rocketdyne. 
and interviewing with them and thinking, oh my gosh, am I going to work where, you know, I kind of grew up as a kid knowing so much about and going into the space shuttle main engine program. It was uh, very, very exciting. And um, working with the, uh, the turbo pumps and the turbo machinery group, very, very technical, uh, one of the trickiest parts of the engine, extreme operating environment with uh, the people that work on it, very, very smart, you know, super high level engineers and scientists. And uh, trying to, to swim with the big dogs, if you will, was, was a bit challenging in the beginning, but they were all really helpful, great group of people, and I wound up working there for a little over seven years. And, and I was really impressed when you were there. You were one of the youngest people at the uh, company. There was a, a, a group of us that were young people, yeah. and you were leading change. And you've always been a person to lead change. You led change with being able to show the design, how its structural integrity was actually going to hold up or not hold up under certain pressures and temperatures. But you're also able to show the engineers new ways of doing things. And you ended up taking that mind frame with you. Now, there was a point in time where you decided, OK, I've, I've gotten to this level. I, I'm here at this company. There was a moment in time where you realized you had skills and abilities that could exist and could be profitable outside of the current organization that you're working in. So but take us back to that moment. What, what went through your mind? Yeah, so I think part of it was probably uh, growing up with my dad. He's uh, an eye doctor and ran his own practice. It was his own small business. And, and we learned from a very early age that we always did, did a lot of different things for the business. And I got to see early on, um, you know, someone who who's a role model of mine, my own father, kind of tinker with his small business and try this, let's do this, and, and work with different challenges. But in the end, it always came down to perseverance and hard work that, that got them through because it doesn't matter what business you're doing, you're going to have hurdles, you're going to have challenges, you're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days. But what matters is, is how are you going to actually turn that into a positive? How are you going to mold that or how are you going to initiate the change as you were speaking to in order to uh, get some, some good out of whatever situation you're in? And it's a it's a it's a bit of a struggle, you know. Everyone's got their their tough times, but you got to keep moving forward and, and working hard, and, and that's that's what I've done. Well, I, I really appreciate that. You are a humble, very humble, <laughs> successful entrepreneur. Uh, you have done these great things. People see the signature of your work all here in Los Angeles and even other places, and and you have the ability to use your, uh, you call it your toolbox, your toolbox in a way that. Uh, creates results. And for those of you that are uh, new to listening, what we do and when we reprogram our brain, what we one of the main things what we do is to merge or tria brain. And if you have listened to episode one, I talk about the, what the tria brain is, which is the combination of the face side of the brain, the left side of the brain, which is the logical side, and the right side of the brain, which is the creative and emotional side. And when you have all these parts of the brain that combine and work together, that's when answers are unleashed. And so being an entrepreneur is activating this tria brain because it's requiring you to put one plus one together to make it more than two. You have to use resources. And in that process, you have to envision what it is that you are going to create. You have to look at what you call the toolbox, which is the resources that you have to work with, and that uses the right side of the brain. And then you have the left side of the brain, which manages how you're going to go about using these resources and not running them out in order to get this done. Uh, you, you have multiple talents. You, uh, uh, were, uh, you successfully were in Ironman, uh, Ironman competition. How, you were like three or four Ironman competitions. For those of you who do not know Ironman, tell them what this is. Well, I, first off, I, th I think I need to hire Olympia to be my PR person. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing, Olympia. Thank you. <laughs> wow, you make me sound so good. <laughs> well, you are a great person, and I want people to understand your brain. When people can see how you think, they can mimic that to be able to be great leaders themselves. Yeah, well, I think um, for me, I think what might resonate with a lot of people is the idea of having trouble focusing on things. and. Um, ADHD, if you will. I mean, I, I have focus issues. It's something that I always need to work on. But this metaphor of the toolbox that, that we've spoke of uh, previously um, in, our, in our time together, um, the toolbox for me is, is a culmination of all the different things I've focused on. So 
for me, I don't necessarily focus only on one thing and, and stay at that. And, and, and that's what I do. I'm a specialist or expert in that field, whatever it might be. Um, for me in, in my lifestyle, I tend to focus on different things. Um, and then, but, but by learning things and continuing to grow in that subspecialty, if you will, that becomes something that I, I have knowledge in and I put that in my toolbox. And I'm not really sure when I might use it, but by always trying to improve myself and learn and grow, then that's an area that I, I, can, I can reflect on or I can lean back on when I need to, when I need to grab something out of my toolbox. So for instance, when, when you're starting a small business, you, you've got something that you can do, there's a product or service that the customers want and, and you can provide it for them. So you start your small business out of an idea and it's just you. But then eventually as you start to get more people on board that are, are getting behind your mission and your strategy, then you need to motivate those people. You need to know how to communicate with those people. So just as a, as a side note, I was a DJ for 15 years and I did a lot of public speaking, a lot of emceeing, hey. <laughs> um, and, uh, but that has turned out to actually be very helpful when, when speaking with other people. And it also translated when I'm in front of NASA giving presentations or when I'm doing a, a science show, that I can explain pretty complex theories and, and matters into easy to understand terms. And that really, a lot of that comes back to my DJing days. You know, I, was, I had to get in front of people. I had to get them excited. I had to have energy and all those sort of things that it wound up, winds up translating into a lot of different areas. So that's just one example of something that I put in my toolbox, learning how to speak and communicate to people through DJing. And now that translates into the business world, into the TV hosting world. I find that fascinating. You have another skill. Uh, you're an adrenaline junkie when it comes to sports. And so tell us how you've used that energy then transform that into your business. Yeah, so, so for me, I, I enjoy uh, having ambitious goals, whether it's in business or, or my personal life, and, and certainly with the adrenaline junkie stuff you're referring to. Uh, I definitely like pushing, pushing my body. Um, so with Ironman triathlons, it's basically a swim, bike, run event. The swim is 2.4 miles. The run is 112 miles. And then you finish it off with a marathon, which is a 26.2 mile run. I'm gasping for air just listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, very long day. Um, so I've, I've done four of those, uh, one in New Zealand, one in uh, Australia, and two here in California. And I've done several half Ironman races. But for me, it's, uh, it's the challenge of having a goal out there and kind of putting a plan together on how I want to achieve that goal and then just doing the best I can. I've never podium finished and I've never finished last. As a, a good friend of mine, David Richman, would say, I was the middle of the pack guy. He actually wrote a book on it. Um, but that's, that's what I am, a middle of the pack guy, and I'm competing against myself to always do better for myself. I think that's a definitely a healthy way of looking at it. I think when, sometimes when we compare ourselves to other people, we give ourselves a false a recognition of our own skills. It is our own skills becoming better than we were before that allows us to succeed to the next level. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I so appreciate what you are saying here. Uh, you are, uh, you were a uh, previous board director for the Entrepreneurs Organization. And tell us how, uh, tell us what specifically in our little moments that we have left, uh, what you would recommend to new business owners? How do they create that mindset needed to grow new businesses? Uh, what tips would you give for new business owners to uh, grow their business and information to a way that it can, it can be profitable? Yeah, that, that's a, a good question. You, you always hear about the, the entrepreneur taking the, the leap of faith and, and jumping off the cliff, if you will, to, to start what they want to start. And I think there's a lot that needs to be done before you reach that point. Um, which for me is the metaphor of getting things in my toolbox. So it's getting experience, learning uh, with whatever companies I'm working with, engaging with different people, networking, which is a big thing. But you get all these things into your toolbox ahead of time. And then when that opportunity finally arises where you know what, you are going to take that leap of faith, you're going to start your own business, then you've got a lot of this experience and um, resources that you can turn to for within yourself that's going to help you to grow your business. And it's going to start out slow, slow, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot of hard work. It's going to take you twice as long as you think it is. It's going to cost three times as, as much as you think it does. Um, but in the end, 
you're doing something that you truly believe in and the amount of motivation you can get out of that is, is truly, truly amazing. So when you're there at your desk, what goes through your mind? I got a lot. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's um, for me, you know, running a larger business now, we have uh, over 50 uh, employees now. It's um, it's this giant machine that's got a bunch of different levers on it. And, you know, we got one lever that's operations. You got one lever that's HR. You got finance and all these different levers that you have at your disposal, if you will, that you need to tinker with and play with to make the machine as efficient and effective as possible. So sitting at my desk, it's thinking about all these different levers and what do we need to do to adjust here, to add here, to take some things away from there, to really get that efficiency out of the business and, and growth that we're ultimately looking for. So if one word that you would give your uh, listeners, what would it be? Perseverance. Perseverance. There you have it. All right. Now, I know that you're going to have so many fans calling in. What What is the best way that people can contact you? So probably uh, chadzadenic.com or Facebook, Chad Zdenek, Twitter, Chad Zdenek. Any one of those are fine. You know, thank you so much for being here thank on our guest. Uh, thank <laughs> you so much for being here on Answers Unleashed. And if you would like to find out more answers to questions like this, like how to become an entrepreneur, how to heal yourself, all these different kind of answers that you like, feel free to call us at 888-88-ANSWERS and ask me directly. Leave a message. I'll, I will get back to you or our staff will get back to you. You're welcome to find me on Facebook.com slash Olympia LaPointe. Again, if you want to see past shows or re-listen to this show, you're welcome to go to kpcradio.com to hear it, as well as the background information at Answers Unleashed. Again, this is Olympia LaPointe here with you. And remember, we are here reshaping your brain with science and faith to find the answers in front of you.